Hello and welcome to Just Make Game. My name is Michael and I'm making a video game. This is a video series about the video game that I'm making. Well, welcome to yet another episode of Just Make Game. I'm still plodding along with Bannerman and I've made a few crucial additions and changes this month, so here we go. First of all, it is worth mentioning that Bannerman will not be in the PAX Indie Showcase this year. Unfortunately, I was not successful in being selected to exhibit my game. There are other options available for going to PAX uh, outside of the Indie Showcase, such as purchasing booth space. But uh, everything's a little bit outside of my financial reach this year. So hopefully next year I'll be renting a booth and exhibiting. Moving on, I have completed the main boss for the forest level. He is basically a souped up version of the standard archer enemies, and he attacks purely through ranged means. He is a massive pain in the ass. He retreats to the top of his little boulder to fire arrows down on you after you successfully land a hit on him. The design philosophy behind this boss is he forces the player to master the dodging moves and mechanics in order to progress, and he's a pretty challenging and fun boss to fight. He also has his own version of the standard battle music track unique to him that I recorded and mixed this month as well. I have also gone ahead and implemented the first of what will be many little uh, unlockable shortcuts throughout Bannerman's levels to the forest map as well. These are optional paths that can be unlocked and opened up and remain unlocked between player deaths. The main reasoning behind this is to reduce the amount of backtracking between the levels required on the player's behalf when they're making multiple attempts on the level or the level's boss. The forest level shortcut takes the player from approximately a quarter of the way through the level to just before the boss gate. But this will vary depending on the specific level and the size of these levels. Later levels will likely involve a number of shortcuts dotted around. And they all require exploration to unlock. And exploration means encountering more enemies and different enemies in different spots and finding different things I've hidden throughout the game, so it's kind of a risk-reward mechanic for the player. Uh, this month I've continued working on the NPC interactions and have also added in a fair amount of flavour text to various parts of the game. These are similar to the NPC interactions, uh, except they obviously don't require any voice acting and they help flesh out the world and deliver the sort of backstory of what's going on in Bannerman. I've had a lot of fun making these um, and dotting them around. They're great for having something to find in sort of hidden away nooks and crannies and it's a great way to deliver some of the exposition that really is pretty clumsy to deliver via dialogue. I have also gone through the animations for each enemy as well as the player character and done a couple of little tweaks to a number of animation frames. Some of these animations, particularly the player's attack animations, were done rather early in development and since these were completed I have gotten a lot better at animating and I've especially gotten better at animating in the style that I want Bannerman to have. So everything just needed a little bit of refinement to bring it up to the standard that I would like. The main differences you might notice are present during the attack animations for each character. There are now more of what we call smear frames present in each attack animation. These help convey a sense of movement and weight during these important frames. As well as just being better looking, these also have a gameplay impact in that the frames with the smears are the frames where the weapons will actually do damage to other characters. 
which helps differentiate them from the wind up and wind down frames that are present on either side of these attacks. In terms of raw gameplay mechanics, I have increased the speed of the majority of player animations, both inside and outside of combat. This helps to increase the feeling of responsiveness of the overall control scheme. I think things were getting a little too slow previously, uh, and that can make the controls feel sloppy and unresponsive. This change also ties into what I've done to the stamina system this month. Previously, the stamina system directly influenced the speed of the player's animations. So if you had a full stamina bar, attacks and other actions were performed quickly. As your stamina depleted, the animations got longer and were more drawn out. This seemed like a cool idea, but on testing I've discovered this really didn't play out how I would like. So to this end, uh, stamina is now consumed upon performing actions, much like before. But now once the stamina is completely depleted, the player is unable to perform actions outside of movement until the stamina bar refills completely. This doesn't take a huge amount of time, it's really only a second or two, but it helps train the player against button mashing and rewards careful positioning and intelligent attacking and defending. I'm actually really happy with the pretty dramatic effect that this has had on the player experience. Currently underway is the next boss in sequence for Bannerman, so this is a mage or a magic user. That is the main boss for the catacombs level. I'm currently working my way through the rotoscoping for this character and soon I'll have the spell effects and everything else complete and I'll be in the engine by next month. Looking forward to next month again, I'll be working on the tile set for the next level in sequence, which is a bridge level, as in literally a bridge. And I'll be implementing this level and others complete with NPCs, items, the flavor text, uh, bosses, that sort of thing. Overall, the end is drawing pretty near. I am over 80% complete according to my scheduling and tracking software I use. Uh, that's outside of usability and sort of final gameplay testing. And although there is undoubtedly more to do, it is getting pretty close. And look, that's probably about enough from me this month. I want to get back to it and finish up those animations. So until next month, I hope you are all well and looking forward to the inevitable release of Bannerman. I will see you all later.